Hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Jonathan Cohn, and today I have another edition of All My Books. This edition is my Terry Brooks collection. Uh, I've done an All My Books for my Star Wars books, my EU collection. I've done an All My Books for my Star Trek collection, and I didn't call it an All My Books, but I did uh, like a ranking of all the adult canon novels which basically showed all my adult canon novels for Star Wars, so that was kind of in all my books. This is another edition of all my books, but I'm just doing Terry Brooks. Rather than do the whole genre of fantasy, which I have way too many books to talk about, and it would not do them justice to, to do them all in one video, I decided to split them up based either on authors or subgenres or, or, or series or something like that. And so today I'm talking about Terry Brooks. Now, Terry Brooks is an interesting character because he wrote... So, uh, a lot of classic fantasy, starting with The Sword of Shannara in the 70s. And a lot of people off the bat either loved it or hated it. The people that loved it thought that the, the whole uh, themes that were like basically like a Lord of the Rings, but, uh, but easier to read, what connected with them. Then you had the people who thought it's Lord of the Rings. It's just a ripoff. And so they hated it. And it was really, you know, a wide berth. But the people who are Terry Brooks fans are, I uh, love Terry Brooks. There is a, I'm in a Facebook group of Terry Brooks fans. And the level of dedication that the people in that Facebook group have is just incredible. And so it shows that his fan base is loyal. They will read his books and they will buy his books. Um, and so I do like uh, that seeing that he has that kind of community built around him. And it's an older community too, because um, been, he's been around for so long. Um, so I really enjoy him personally. I'm in the category of I loved Sword of Shannara for being Lord of the Rings, but easier to read because I liked, because I was having, I was struggling trying to get through Lord of the Rings. And while I talk about how, um, you know, books, series like the, the Wheel of Time is my favorite fantasy series and someone like Brandon Sanderson's my favorite fantasy author. And I love Rune Lords and all these types of things. The Sword of Shannara was the first ever real fantasy book, like just straight up epic fantasy that wasn't a classic or wasn't a kid's book that I read. And I loved it. And it invigorated my love of fantasy. And I can be like, yes, I can re recognize it's just rehashing Lord of the Rings, but I'm okay with that because it's just, it's just delightful to read. Uh, and it got me into the fandom. And the later books, if you're, if you're worried about it just rehashing Lord of the Rings, the later books go on their own. He's written like 30 books in the, uh, in the Shannara series, and then he's written some other series as well. And uh, he's really created his own environment of, of his own type of epic fantasy. That's, it's, it's kind of morphed a little bit with each series as it's changed and he's gone with the different eras uh, of fantasy. And you can see basically like the, the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s, the 2010s, you can see the, the, the progression of the Shannara series through all of those eras, um, but it still has this in, uh, indelible quality that is Terry Brooks. Whenever I read a Terry Brooks book, I'm like, okay, I know what's, I, I think I know what's going to happen because he has this kind of, this thing he likes to do, the way he writes his love interests, the way he writes his strong female characters, the way he writes his magic system, the way he writes his climaxes. You're like, oh, oh, that's, that's a Terry Brooks thing. I, I know what I'm reading now. So... I'm excited to talk about my collection. So, uh, the first, the, the Short of Shannara trilogy, I have multiple copies of each book. And I'll talk about which um, copy is my favorite. Uh, but once I get past that, I really just have one copy of each book. Uh, so I'm just showing the cover and I'll just talk about the book itself really briefly. So the first ever copy of, of Terry Brooks I ever bought was this copy, was the Sword of Shannara, this edition. It grabbed me because I had heard he wrote uh, some Star Wars books, a Star Wars book uh, novelization of episode one. And I also had heard that he was a great, easy fantasy read. And I picked up this book. It was one of the longest books I'd ever read when I picked it up. And I just blew through it. And you can see it is, it is worn. It is tattered. Um, but I bought it at Books A Million, and it was such a, such a valuable read. And I've loaned it out to friends who have all read it and loved it. And I've, I've had such a delightful time with it. And... Uh, I really like the, the, the cover because you have, you know, the castle at the top and you have the little person down here. And this is, I assume, supposed to be a normal sized person, but the scale just makes you think, wow, that's huge. Um, so I think they do scale, right? And it's got this beautiful wraparound on the back with the, the, the wording on the back. So I think this is a, 
uh, a pretty good copy. I actually quite enjoy it. Next, I have my second paperback edition, which is based on the original artwork, which is this version. Now, as a piece of artwork, this is more classic fantasy. This is a Brothers Hildebrandt uh, cover, and it really feels like Dungeons & Dragons epic fantasy. Like, that's just... It feels like that type of story, and I think this this gives the tone of the first book perfectly. It, it gets this gets the tone of the first book, and I think this is just a I think it's a beautiful cover. Um, uh, I, I'm it's so sad that they didn't stay with Shannara that the brothers Hildebrandt left after the first book because their cover art is quite interesting. Um, they almost look the one in this one in particular this character in particular almost looks like claymation. Um, but I really like this one. My last copy of Sword of Shannara, my last copy of it, I, I'm not crazy, uh, is the annotated Sword of Shannara. I would not have a hardcover of this book necessarily if it wasn't for the annotations. I bought this because it had the annotations, not because of the cover, because it's just a standard sword. Yuck. Don't give me a standard sword. Give me some, give me, give me something more. But what this book has is an illustrated version of one of the pieces of art in the original books, and that is this uh, beautiful uh, artwork right here. I, I love this artwork. I, 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 I love it. I think this is great. Like, make this the cover. This is a fantastic cover. Um, cover. Cover artists, they think they know what we as fantasy fans want, but they really don't generally because they, they, they're wrong so often. So of the three covers, I have to give my favorite to the, to the original because it's just, it's just a beautiful cover. But my quick runner-up is this one because this is still a pretty good cover. Let's go on to Elfstones. Now, Elfstones is a book that I used to have multiple copies of, but uh, my, my original copy of it was a trade paperback that had Austin Butler's Will Umsford on it uh, for the TV show because I bought the books around when the TV show was coming out. Uh, not because the TV show was coming out. That's just when I got into the books. Anyway, and I read that copy, and I just didn't like that version of Trade Paperback. I don't like the movie versions. I just bought that copy because that's what they had in bookstores, and I wanted to read the next book. And I ended up giving that book to my local um, uh, like lending library, uh, and I, th I gave it and put it in there and thought, you know, I'm going to put it in there, see what happens. And within days, it was gone. And my paperback version of uh, Wish Song. So now I only have one copy of Elf Stones, and that is this one. It has the Robin Hood looking character on it, um, and then it has you know Will and uh, who I assume is either Amberla or uh, one of the other characters. I forgot her name, but uh, I think this is another great cover. This is Daryl K. Sweet, who is my favorite cover artist. This is not my favorite cover art, but he's my favorite cover artist overall, and. You know, this, this again gets the tone of the books really well, so I like this cover. Then I have Wish Song, and I have two copies of Wish Song. I have my copy of Wish Song, which is uh, this cover, which matches the style of my sword cover a copy, but the problem with it is uh, it's just, I don't know, it just, it doesn't, it, this one works because of the scope and scale, and this one's foreboding, but it doesn't feel impressive as cover art. Like, it gets the tone that this is the darkest book in the trilogy, but it's not as cre... I, I, don't, I don't think this is just as beautiful to look at um, as the other cover here. And I do... What, what the, the, the thing that makes this best is that there's a little guy hiding here. I have no idea who... That that was the... Main, that, 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 was the that guy was there when I first bought the book. Um, the better version, I think, is the Daryl K. Sweet original, because you still have the, the, the Mord Wraith or at least what you think is a Mordraith there, and you have our two main protagonists, and you have a castle, and it looks like there's some kind of fire or something going on in the background, and they just look epic, like they're going on a big adventure. Like, this is just, of course I'm going to give this cover the, the win, because it's, it's just a beautiful cover. Story all okay, sweet. Probably my favorite, uh, is it my favorite cover of the trilogy? Maybe, I don't know. I love this cover. Now let's get into... Some other books I have. I also have the prequel book, The First King of Shannara. Um, again, in that old, in that other style. Um, I think this works really well. Uh, the First King of Shannara, the original artwork, actually, like it doesn't thrill me 
uh, I think that uh, they kind of tie. Because I think I do like this. That you have the bridge. You have Jawas. Not Jawas. You have these characters walking across. You've got the horse on the side and the wraparound like the original sort of... Sh- or not the original Sword of Shannara, but the Sword of Shannara I showed at the beginning. So I do like this cover. And this is one of my favorite books in the series. Then I have the Heritage of Shannara. I have it in a weird thing. I have a bind-up from Wings Books. How many of you actually have a copy of a Wings Books book? This is my only copy of a Wings Book book. But this is a bind-up of the Heritage of Shannara, books one and two, Scions and Druid of Shannara. These are not my favorite Shannara stories. In fact, as a series, it's, it's kind of mediocre, I think. But I think that this cover art works well. Um, uh, I think it's also, uh, I like how it's, gets a different style and tone and it also has a nice kind of wrap around on the back. I think it's just a re, re, same image, just flipped, but it's a nice wrap around. Uh, so that's my copy of the heritage. And then I have, uh, one of my least favorite books, the Elf Queens of Shannara. Not, I don't, I don't like this book particularly. It's my least favorite in that tetralogy for sure. But, uh, and this cover just doesn't do much. I don't like. I like the design of it, the rock and the, the characters and the fire and the, yeah, none of that, none of it works for me, sadly. Uh, and the book itself didn't work either. Now, this one, the cover worked and the book worked a little bit better, but it's still not a favorite. Uh, the Creature is works really well on Talismans, the final book in the Heritage of Tetra, uh, Shannara Tetralogy. And of course you have who I think is Walker Bow, and you have this skeleton looking creature. Like it works as a cover. Um, it's just not my favorite. What I really don't like is that on the back of it, they put Sword of Truth. And I think this was technically published before the Sword of Truth series came out, but now it's just frustrating because if someone saw, like was in a bookstore and they pulled this out, they'd see Sword of Truth and they'd be like, oh, this is that Sword of Truth series. And then they get really disappointed when not only is that not a Sword of Truth series, it's the fourth book in, a, in this series. Uh, so I don't like that it says Sword of Truth. But this is the best of the, the heritage covers that I have. But my editions are all over the place. I need to get standardized all the same type of edition. Next, we have my favorite Shannara series as a whole. My, the Short of Shannara and First King are like the best books. But if we're talking about a series, like a trilogy or trilogy that's awesome, this trilogy is the best. And that is The Voyage of Gerala Shannara. The first book's Isle Witch, which is a... Uh, a pretty good cover. It's it's just got you know waterfalls and stuff. It's it's not horrible. But the thing is, they messed up something with this trilogy. First of all, this is just a weird paper to have behind. It. It's not your standard uh, end paper, and this looks so much better without it. And on the back, it's got a wrap around. And this this ship, this should be the image on the center of the cover. This was so eye-catching when I noticed it. And I was like, I need to find out what this is. Like, this is brilliant. And this is what got me really interested in this book. And if they had put that on the front here, oh, it would have worked so much better. Um, So I'm kind of miffed that they didn't do that with this book. Uh, But anyway, next we have the book Antrax, the second book in the Voyage of the Gerald of Shannara. And it's an okay cover. And then you look at the back down here, you've got the weird chair with the mechanisms. This is when, the reading of this trilogy was when I realized, oh, there's some revelations about the Shannara series that are really interesting to me. And I liked the way this was done. But look at the top of this uh, page. Look at how you have that little lighthouse type thing. And then you've got the ship flying towards it with the orange sun. And then you've got all the town that's deserted. This should have been the image on the front cover. This would have been a perfect image on the front cover. Again, Del Rey, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? First of all, why don't you have like a Daryl K. Sweet type illustrator working on this stuff? I know Daryl K. Sweet himself might be too expensive, but why didn't you get someone like him to work on this stuff? And secondly, why didn't, why didn't you just take this and make this the cover? Like, oh, I'm so frustrated. Then the third book in the trilogy, which is another great book, is Morgawer. And this is, I think, the best cover art of this trilogy. I think Antrax is the best book in the trilogy uh, as, a, as a novel. But I think this has the best cover art. And you've got the blue theme going with it, whereas the other books had the orange and green theme. But you have the blue theme going with it, and you have the kind of yellowish background, and you have the dark character entering the dark castle. But uh, what makes this book work is the back, again. 
that is such a terrifying image. I saw this image on the book and then I read the book and I was like, this is fantastic and terrifying. And that's one of the reasons the Morgul War is one of my favorite villains is because it's ingrained, the horrifying nature of him is ingrained in my mind. The second part of this is look at this beautiful top here where you have the ship crashed and the green meadow. That should have been the cover of this book. Again, like they should have made this the top, the cover of this one, and this should have been the top cover of this one. They just, they, they, they royal me messed up on the Daryl Shinar trilogy. There is a bind up that actually has the ship flying across. That bind up is awesome. And speaking of bind ups, I have another one for the High Druid of Shannara uh, trilogy. This uh, includes, let me get the, the names of the books from this. Uh, this has the books. Uh, Jaka Rus, Tenaquil, and Straken. I've never been known how to pronounce any of those. And this one, I don't like the, the, the paper here. It's really thin. And also, I don't like just man-holding staff. It looks like this should be the CW. But what I do like about this book is that it comes with some valuable um, components. When you open up the book, you have this beautiful illustration of the uh, of the four lands and then you have this beautiful illustration of the world of the forbidding and this is just this is premium content here well done to I, I i applaud them for putting a full color map in this like that's what makes the bind up worth it i think not just having the complete trilogy in one book but by that bind up i think is really worth it next we have like a solid trilogy it's good it's pretty good but it's not superb it's not amazing and that's the, uh, the Dark Legacy of Shannara, the Wards of Fairy, the Bloodfire Quest, and the Dark Legacy of Shannara. Now, I don't love these covers. I don't, I don't love the covers. Um, uh, you know, there's, it's not really art. It's more just someone using design stuff. But they kept the themes consistent. They kept the layout consistent. Um, and they kept the spines consistent. So I liked that. Uh, so, so that worked. But, but these books, are, were, as books, were pretty good. But the thing that they, they missed is that they created some artwork uh, that was fold-outable. First of all, they had a complete map, which was good. But they have this artwork. And this is beautiful artwork. Of the, one of the scenes in the book that I love. It feels very Lord of the Rings, very Dungeons & Dragons-esque. And I'm like, wouldn't this have just been superb? I would have felt like I was reading like a uh, Drizzt novel from Dungeons and Dragons. This should have been the cover. This is this is just superb. Um, again, Del Rey, what are you thinking with your covers? Then on this book on Bloodfire Quest, we also have this superb cover art. I love this one. I love the guy holding the girl. I love the the creatures being terrified by the fire. Oh. It, uh, it is, it is, it is great. Um, uh, that should have been the cover. And then the third book, the third book is terrifying, uh, but the third book has the, the Witch Wraith uh, by Todd Lockwood, and uh, this is also fantastic stuff. Just fantastic stuff. Like, Terry Brooks and Del Rey, what are you thinking? I'm, I'm baffled by this. Next, I have some of his kind of prequel-ish series. Um, uh, the first series I have is the Genesis of Shannara trilogy with this character, um, uh, on the Armageddon's children. You have the character before the tree, uh, b good trilogy. I was blown away by this trilogy. Not what I expected, but still a ton of fun. It's more pop post-apocalyptic, uh, fa fantasy than it is just traditional straight up fantasy. But this was a great, um, uh, book and a pretty pretty cool cover. Uh, it's not my style of cover that I would prefer, and again, I prefer the Dale K. Suite, but it's still pretty good. Then you have the second book, The Elves of Sintra, which is still, uh, this is a better cover, I think, and this has a beautiful wraparound, and you can see the tail of the ice dragon, but then you see the actual ice dragon itself. Gorgeous, gorgeous stuff. I'm going to move this out of the way. There we go. Have more room. And then... Uh, uh, this, was, this was a really good book, and this was a really good scene in this book. And then you have my least favorite cover art of this trilogy is the Gypsy Morph. This feels kind of bland. The thing about this cover, I don't know if anyone else feels this way, I see this cover, and the only thing I can think is of the Bridge on the River Kwai. 
Um, uh, the Bridge on the River Kwai uh, is a great movie. Uh, it's too long of a movie. It needs to be shorter, but it's a great movie. I wonder if it could be remade. They need to remake it with um, Ewan McGregor. Anyway, The Bridge on the River Kwai is a great movie, and this scene looks just like the end scene from that. But uh, this was, it was a good book. It was a satisfying ending. Um, it's just got fire around it. It's like a ring of fire around it. And it's, it's, not, it's not particularly amazing of a cover, but it's a pretty good book. Next, we have books that I think the covers are, are pretty good, but I think that the, the books themselves were not well done. Uh, that's the Legends of Shannara books, Bears of the Black Staff and The Measure of Magic. Uh, Bears of the Black Staff, when I read it, I thought it was pretty good, and I was super excited to see where he would go. The premise here that they have to get out of the bubble, that they have to repopulate, that they have to defeat the enemy and branch out into the rest of the Four Lands. Brilliant concept. Brilliant concept. He never goes anywhere with it. He abandons the concept and instead wants to do an intense character focus work, so they never really get out of the bubble in this duology. It's also, the story is just not complete, and so they should have made it a trilogy. But I think he was just rushed, that like he just wanted to finish this and work on other stuff. Uh, but this was, this was great stuff. This was, uh, this, this was a great potential and a terrible payoff. This is, this is my official least favorite book in the series. I think the artwork's okay. I don't like it when you just have Guy holding a staff walking somewhere. Same with this one. Don't love just Guy with a staff. But it's not my least favorite artwork. But this is my least favorite book in the series. Oh, I was so disappointed with it. What I like about this one, it's kind of got, you see the, the banners and the kind of creatures moving in from the side. Really f reminds me of the Battle of Helm's Deep. But overall, a disappointing duology that should have been a trilogy and should have delivered on the promises it made. You know, you know, promises made, promises kept, not by this trilogy. All right, and then I have a trilogy of books uh, that is uh, a book trilogy I have not read, and I have to grab one of the books real quick. And this is the uh, Defenders of Channera trilogy that I have the Hydra's Blade, I have the Darkling Child, and I also have the Sorcerer's Daughter. This is a trilogy I just recently bought. I've never read it. Um, uh, but I intend to read it in the beginning of 2023. These are nice short fantasy books. I've been looking for that because so many of my fantasy books are so long and take forever to get through. But these are nice quick, sh quick reads. And not again, not my style, but I do like the kind of brush stroke style to it. That is, that is pretty cool. It's, it's not my style, but it's still pretty cool. Um, and he keeps, within a trilogy, he keeps a consistent theme. I'm okay with him changing themes between tetralogies or between trilogies, but inside the trilogy, it needs to be consistent, and at least this one is. So this is on my January TBR, which that video hasn't gone out yet, so you already know one of my TBR books. Finally, I've gone through all my Shannara books. I don't have the, the, uh, the Word in the Void trilogy, and I don't have his science fiction book or his newest books that he's written. But there is another Terry Brooks series that I love almost as much as I love the Shannara series. And that is The Magic Kingdom of Landover books. I have two bind-ups, and then I have a singular book. Uh, the, bi the first bind-up is a bind-up of Magic, King for Kingdom f Magic Kingdom for Sale Sold, The Black Unicorn, and Wizard at Large. Magic Kingdom for Sale Sold is one of my favorite fantasy novels. One of the most brilliant concepts, one of the most delightful executions of a fantasy book concept. And it's really, a, the first book is a fantasy satire. Book, the books two through six identify as fantasy sapphire, uh, uh, satire, but not really. It's not really satire, satirical, but the first book is satirical, and I loved it. I thought it was brilliant. The rest of the books are great, and they really work well as like standalones. Like, there's a through line among all the books, but it's not like Wheel of Time, where there's all these plots, and basically each book leads into the next, and the next, and the next. This is like, this tells a complete story. All right, let's go to the next one. Tells a complete story. And there's maybe a few uh, characters and references from previous things and things that'll be put in the future, but as a whole, it's self-contained. And so you can like, read one of these, and then come back months later and read the next one, and uh, you won't feel lost. And just the, I, I do like this cover. This has like a movie poster quality to it where you feel like awe-inspiring. This is one where the modern cover, this bind-up, works better than the original. The original just looks satirical and wacky. And this, and it should be satirical and wacky. But this just feels like I am a man who's never been in this land 
and I'm walking in for the first time. So that's this bind up. Great, great books. Then you have this bind up. I don't love the cover because I don't like witchcraft and stuff, which is weird that I like magic and my fantasy books, but I don't like witchcraft. Anyway, um, but it's okay. Uh, it's got, you know, it's got a wraparound with a kind of creepy thing on the back that's basically also on the front. Uh, and they keep, the nice thing is you notice that they keep like the font about Terry Brooks's name. They keep that uh, consistent among all his books. That's, that's pretty good. That's pretty smart of them to do. But uh, this book, these two books, The Tangle Box and The Witch's Brew from this bind up, they're good books. I just don't like this cover. Then we have A Princess of Landover, which I was so excited to read. And I thought it was delightful and cute. And then I was like, that's it. You cannot leave it there. You must do more with this character, the Princess of Landover. You have to do more. There needs to be a seventh book where she gets together with mm -mm, and things happen. And there hasn't been that book yet. Write the seventh book. He says if they make a movie he'll, of the first uh, book, he'll, do a, uh, uh, he'll, he'll write the seventh book. And I'm like, you have the time. You're about to finish your trilogy uh, that you're working on your Child of Darkness trilogy. Or is it a tetralogy? He's about to finish that series. So he has time. Why don't you write the seventh book? Give us a nice proper ending and give us a nice big climax. So I do. Uh, I did enjoy this one. One of my favorites. <coughs> <coughs> One of my favorites in the series, I love this cover art, by the way. Love the design of the castle and the gates and the girl walking in. Very Once Upon a Time-ish. Not just the TV show, but also the phrase Once Upon a Time. Uh, this captures it. Like, this is an adult fantasy uh, series and this is an adult fantasy book, but this almost feels kind of fairy tale-ish and a, a younger person, maybe a teenager, could read it. So that is my Terry Brooks books collection. I don't have every book of his. I'm still missing about ten. Uh, let's see. Four, three, two, one, one. I'm, I'm missing about 10 or 11 um, of his books, but I still have like 30 of them, so I still have quite a lot. But I love reading his books. I'm, oh, I'm almost always entertained. I love his style. It's different than most other fantasy authors out there. So that's my Terry Brooks collection. If you have a Terry Brooks collection, which are your favorite books and which are your favorite cover arts? And... Uh, what are your favorite books in the Terry Brooks series? And how long have you been a fan? Leave all those answers in the comments section down below. And until next time, I'm Jonathan, and thank you for watching.